we are live. Okay, we are called to order the Franklin Regional School Board of Directors Committee of the Whole Meeting for January 10th, 2022. Uh, we were in executive session from 6.30 to 7.27 for legal and safety issues. Okay, just for FYI, <clears throat> we had a board resignation, oh. and I'll read you Mr. Corsetti's letter of resignation. It is with regret that I tender my resignation from the Franklin Regional Board of School Directors, effective January 7th, 2022. I'm grateful for having the opportunity to be voted to serve on the board of, of this organization, and I offer my best I wishes worth it, for the continued success to serve the children of the Franklin Regional School. Sincere, sincerely, Michael Corsetti. We have 30 days to fill the vacancy, so I'm going to ask Ms. Wolf if she can put an ad in our paper and advertise for people interested in our vacancy. They can send a short letter. Okay, there are zero public comments tonight. We're gonna to move the superintendent's report. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Happy New Year. I'm really excited to actually uh, turn this over to Dr. Santa Mont because we have students in the audience and we're going to highlight and showcase some of our middle school students. And so at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Santa Mont. Uh, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate being able to come out tonight. And um, this is our student of the month. And for student of the month at the middle school, we focus on our five C's. And for the month that uh, I am presenting tonight, we were focusing on communication. Our students of the month are chosen by our house teachers. They nominate two candidates in each house that they feel best represent the C that we're looking at. And then all of the candidates are sent out to the middle core teachers who then vote and generally we have one representative from each grade level this month uh, we were very excited because we had a tie in both the seventh and eighth grade and we sent it out again and the, the same students came back tied again so we felt probably just go with these students <laughs> so uh, i am going to start with sixth grade and sophia Ginetto. In seventh grade, Luke Morcos. And in seventh grade, Natasha Sudel. And then in eighth grade, Bella Ralston. And also in eighth grade, Matthew Marcos. And these guys do a great job all the time in making uh, the middle school just a great place to be. So we're really proud of them and really impressed with what they do. Thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. Students, congratulations, student of the month. Right. Thank you, great students, order. and thank you, parents. Yep. Thank you for be careful going trusting on us with your children. Thank you, that's a nice honor, and quite honestly, one of the biggest problems in the world for you folks as young people is the lack of communication. So a double hat's off for what you learned, thank you. Thank you very much. And that concludes the superintendent's report for this evening. Thank you. Okay, uh, solicitor's comments, anything? I have no uh, report for public session. Well, if I may just sure. discuss the uh, resignation, maybe for the Go community ahead. is aware. Um, as the uh, board president said earlier, we have a resignation that has to be filled within 30 days. If for some reason the board could not uh, reach an agreement, um, if after the 30 days expires, uh, any electorate here in the uh, um, school district could go to the Court of Common Pleas of Westmoreland County, file a petition, and the court would then take jurisdiction uh, to appoint someone in the future. Um, so if the board does not uh, <clears throat> um, have an appointment in place before the 7th of next month, um, then that or process the, could the goal possibly is, go into effect. The goal is to announce somebody on the 24th. So we want anybody has a letter to have it in by Monday, a week from today. Okay? 
Will the uh, the acceptance be on the next at the next voting meeting? Yes. Okay. That's what the goal is. Okay, we're going to move on to agenda items. <coughs> Personnel, Miss Wells. Wells. Willis. 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 I'm sorry. I'll <coughs> that. I've only known her for five years. Good evening. Um, at January 24th meeting, we'll ask for your approval um, for certified personnel. We have three extensions of assignments for our long-term substitute teachers. Um, we have one correction of an assignment and one additional long-term long substitute teacher, which was based on a, a mid-year retirement that the board approved at a previous meeting. Under leaves of absence, we will be asking your approval for three child-rearing leaves and one disability leave. We also have new substitutes um, for approval. And then under uh, support personnel, we'll be asking for your approval um, for a, we had a change in status for my part-time. One of our part-time custodians was has bid and has been recommended to be awarded for a full-time position, and then which left the part-time position open. So that would be number two, hiring the part-time custodian. We have a resignation um, due to other employment, and then we also have um, additional substitute under support personnel. And then under supplemental personnel, um, number one, the table listed there would be the remaining um, supplemental positions that need filled to finish out the 21-22 school year. And we also had a resignation um, for one of the supplemental positions effective at the beginning of the um, second semester. So those are the um, agenda items for the 24th for your consideration. Any questions on personnel? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Westmoreland County Student Assistance Program. John, okay. Good evening. Before you today is our annual agreement for our dedicated SAP liaison, which is provided to us through Westmoreland Case Management and Supports, and we uh, provide $25,000 towards this person's salary, and they are dedicated to our district for the entire school year, and this would be for next school year, 22-23. We already have this person in place, um, and we are in our uh, fourth or fifth year, I believe, with the dedicated SAP liaison full-time in our district. Any questions? Thank you. Okay, Mr. Schreckengast, Middle School Wireless Access Point Replacement. <clears throat> Good evening. I have uh, one item on the agenda tonight. That is the replacement of the Middle School Wireless Access Points. Um, currently, that system is six years old. Uh, the new system we'll put in place will be five times faster, a lot more robust than what we currently have. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Any questions? Yeah, just one. Uh, do do we get a percentage of that back? Oh, yes. Yes, thank you for reminding me. This will be done uh, with the, uh, through the E-rate process, so we will be uh, refunded 40% of the uh, reimbursed, 40% of the project cost at the end of the school year. So the cost is really 60% of this number? Correct. Thank Correct. you. We budget for the whole thing just in case we weren't approved. We have never and not approved for an E-rate project. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, thank you, Mr. Schreckengas. Mr. Perry, gifts, grants, donations, and budget transfers. Good evening. Uh, this month we have $117 from FR staff to the Fundamule program. $240 from the Rochester Institute of Technology uh, and a mini grant to support the high school project Lead the Way program. And that's been uh, continual support from RIT over a number of years to uh, continue to support the high school program through these mini grants. And then again, we have a $9 contribution to the middle school from the Anderson Corporation. Any questions on budget or on gifts and donations? Yes. yes. 
I, um, I just, I just want for the benefit of the, the public to understand why we have to approve nine dollars. <laughs> um, that can you explain the policy that's in place that requires us to evaluate a, a nine dollar donation? And also, I just wanted to point out the, the the significance of RIT and our relationship with RIT and some of the benefits that that we have using them at Franklin Regional. It's really significant. <laughs> Sure. Um, yeah, the gift policy um, requires the, the the board to approve all donations, grants, or gifts um, to the district, and there isn't really a materiality threshold specified within the policy. And this is to ensure um, that obviously uh, any gifts or grants or donations are appropriate for the school setting, but also gives consideration to equity. Um, so that a gift doesn't um, provide an inequitable situation between classrooms or school buildings or, um, or athletic teams or things along that nature, but then also sustainability so that um, a gift doesn't create a, a future liability for the district or an, an additional cost, um, whereas $9 might be an extreme example, but um, that's the, the, the essence behind the policy and the reasoning behind it, and there just is not a materiality threshold specified within that policy. Um, as you mentioned, uh, RIT uh, has continued to provide support to the district. Um, the, the Project Lead the Way program has been very successful. It started out just at the high school, but it's expanded all the way down uh, through the middle school and the elementary school, and some of the educational people can probably speak a little bit more to that, but uh, um, it's continued to expand, and, and again, that's one of those things that started with uh, some levels of support, but then the district also um, continues to sustain that program because it's worth the cost, the benefits are worth the cost. So at the high school level, so at the high school level, the Project Lead the Way courses, uh, students who complete the Project Lead the Way course in engineering, or, or the courses in engineering, at the end take a test. And if they pass that test, they can essentially uh, earn credits through the Rochester Institute of Technology. And so that course is, is uh, supported there. We also have courses with other universities through Project Lead the Way in biomedical science that, where students can also earn uh, college and the high school credit as well as the computer science. It's my understanding that we've saved them over a million dollars. We've mm -hmm. saved families over a million dollars with this type of program. Okay, so, so RIT's one side, well, just oh, a yeah, portion one of portion of it, uh, the, the majority of those dollars come through the Westmoreland County Community College and the uh, college and the high school classes. It's not uncommon for us to have students with over 40 college credits leaving our high school and uh, as they move on to the next level. So if you take what our students pay and you analyze that based upon the national average for college tuition, the annual savings for Franklin Regional students uh, and families exceed at $1.1 million typically. So it's a great opportunity. And uh, I have to give credit uh, to our high school and, and counseling staff, as well as our, our community partners for their willingness to, to, to make this happen and put all the parameters in place, but also our teachers who teach these classes for no additional compensation, uh, but for additional work just to provide that benefit to our students. Any other questions? Okay, budget transfers, Mr. Perry. This month we just have $667.24 <laughs> in general fund budget transfers. Any questions on budget transfers? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Perry. Mr. Matsey, replacement of carpeting. Good evening. Um, item number six on the agenda is the replacement of six offices at the Newlandsburg School for replacement not to exceed $20,000. Not to exceed what, sir? $20,000. Oh, I see it. I'm sorry. I missed it there. That's okay. Any questions on carpeting? Okay, we're moving on to change order, GC027. 
evening. Um, I am here to recommend GST 27. It is a change order to Muchi construction for the intermediate school. This is to correct a line of sight issue at the intermediate school building by installing a uh, toilet part additional par toilet partition. The cost of this change order is $2,491.40. Is this, a, is this a, something they forgot or something that was added? Or? It is something that needed to be added due to a line of sight issue. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions on the change order? Thanks, Nancy. Okay. All right, the next one's the election of the Franklin Regional School Board representative for the WIU Board of Directors. And Ms. Ramey's volunteered to do that job. We're going to officially vote you in at the next voting meeting, but I think you have a meeting before that at the IU. You're the third Tuesday of every month, and we have our meeting the 24th, so. If you voted on the 24th, but you can go on the 20, on the 18th. Okay? Thank you for doing that, by the way. Any questions on the IU? Okay, DEP consent assignment resolution. Dr. Perano. Essentially, this relates to a situation at the middle school where a janitor closet uh, during original construction was uh, the, the drain the, the, the sink drain in that, that, that area uh, went into the storm sewer system. Uh, when, and the, this year we were notified by, by the community, uh, worked with uh, members of the community and, and worked with the DEP that, that that situation existed when we had uh, mop water, but essentially with floor wax or a wax stripper in it, and of course it's milky. Uh, we obviously worked to facilitate that cleanup, as well as work with the DEP in, in the process. Uh, however, that comes as well with, with some penalty. Uh, obviously, you can't have a, a drain that goes into the storm, storm sewage system. And so, and so the penalty, you know, you know, obviously we're working with the DEP, is reduced as a result of it, us working with them, our responsiveness in the situation, uh, and the fact that there is probably no one in this organization that worked in the, I know there was, there's no one in this organization that worked in the organization when, when that happened, as well as many of the people who originally were responsible for, for it may not be alive anymore. So. Dr. P, I think, actually, uh, I think after your negotiation, if you divide uh, the fine by the number of years that this has been going on, yeah. it's pretty cheap. <laughs> but, it is. And, and I, I don't think this would have happened even now, it, 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 except the fact that, that uh, Cleveland Brothers is so aware. Right. And, and when they saw it, they, they didn't care who did it. They just wanted to be sure it wasn't them. So yeah. that's, that's exactly why right. it was brought up. So it's, I, I think it's a good idea. I, mean, I think you did a good job of getting the reduction. Right. Well, and, and our staff did a great job in terms of working with them immediately. <laughs> uh, when we were notified late, late one afternoon, our staff worked through the night as well as with outside contractors to make sure that that area was properly uh, remediated. Okay. It was actually, we got to it before it got into the stream or, or whatever, right. but it was still, still there, so. Any other questions on DEP? Hearing none, Mr. Yant, you're up, paper. <clears throat> um, last year, when we named the paper of record, uh, we switched from the Penn Franklin to the uh, to the uh, Tribune Review, and uh, I, uh, I I would like to uh, the board to look at that again. I've uh, researched it. The Tribune Review, I mean, excuse me, the Penn Franklin provides every single thing that's required by the statute governing schools. I mean, papers of record, and. In addition to that, the Penn Franklin, I believe, supports us even now better than the trip does relative to sporting events, events in the schools, taking pictures, being there. As you can see tonight, sitting in our in the audience, listening to the meeting, et cetera. So um, I, I believe that 
that the, the, the sole thing not provided by the Penn Franklin is internet access and for the purposes of a paper of record, that's not, that's not an issue to me, primarily because everything that pretty much the board has need for is on our website. Is that not cor correct, Dr. Perotto? We do place uh, place all of that information on our website as well. Exactly. So, yeah. so, and, and I would think that that parents or anyone else interested in seeing this would look to the website before they even went to Tribune Review because it'd be much easier to find. So, I would like to ask the president to put this on the agenda. It'll be on the agenda for the voting meeting. And not any questions about it? Anybody have any questions for Bill? Yes. Uh, no, I I would like to comment on what Bill is saying. I'm uh, sorry, I can't hear you. I, I would like to comment on what you said, Bill, for the public as well. Uh, the Penn Franklin has been in this community for years and years and years and supported us. And quite honestly, I've been approached by many, many of our taxpayers out in the, out in the public asking why that happened. Quite honestly, I don't think that it made any sense. Uh, anything that anybody would want is, like th what Dr. P said, it's on our website. So for those who want to look at it digitally, it's there. But we've got a hell of a lot of folks that are paying taxes here that would like to look in a paper because they're not really into the computer stuff, which is fine. That's their prerogative, but they're also taxpayers. On top of that, uh, the readership of the people, there's more people that actually read the Penn Franklin. There are our local residents. The Trib is all over Westmoreland County. And uh, I just think for the just a sake, we need to really have this discussion and, and look at doing this. And on top of it, it actually cost us as a school district less money to do the legals in the Penn Franklin than it does the Trib. That's my comment. Thank you. I didn't mention that, uh, Mr. Mitterrender, but uh, the, the Trib is a factor of seven, rough, approximately, more expensive times seven than the Penn Franklin is. So, and I think the taxpayers, even though that's not a big sum, I don't know what we spend. I don't know if anybody knows what we spend a year, but I would imagine it's a substantial amount of money that we spend on. I can tell on, you. Uh, the difference is a, is a thousand dollars. I I ran the numbers and uh, with Mr. Perry's help, uh, and the difference is an average of two thousand dollars versus three thousand dollars. So it's um, two thousand dollars roughly. I mean, it changes. The lines change constantly, so it's a rough estimate. So it's roughly 2,000, between 1,500 and 2,000 a year for the Penn Franklin and roughly 3,000 for the TRIB. And, um, and in terms of circulation, part of the discussion that I would like to have also is about the circulation, just like what Mr. Mitterator said. There's, you know, in the print circulation says the TRIB has 1,700, uh, uh, viewers um, circulate print circulation and the Penn Franklin has 2200 but what we don't know is um, virtually and online what's our reach and I don't know if the trip can give us those numbers but I'd like to know what our reach is um, with the trip well insofar as the statute goes the statute uh, addressing circulation just I'm talking it. about reach that, that, that it be a, how many a, a paper of general circulation and a paper within our community. that operates more than twice a week, and or at least uh, more than once a week, I believe it is. And, and uh, so, I mean, I, I could not find anything there that it did not qualify absent the uh, internet requirement, oh, right. they, which is not a requirement of the statute. No, no, no. This is these are our parameters. Okay. As a, as a school district and. But I, I would like to see what's the reach. What, what's the true reach? I don't know if 1700 is the true reach because we don't know what the digital access reach is. I, I'd like to see what that is. Okay, can we get that? I'd like to, can I, can I bring up um, a point? Because we have a lot of new members here too. What, um, and I, I still I subscribe to the Penn Franklin because I do enjoy still getting the articles um, the local articles about the school and the different things uh, in the community. So I, I do subscribe to the Penn Franklin. I think it is a valuable asset for the community. So I don't have a grievance against the paper. I, I do think it's a, a good asset to our community. The um, I think the discussion point, as I remember it last time when we did bring it up, was um, 
the point being of paper of record. What is the point of paper of record? It's not necessarily do you publish anything in that paper or does the school send all their articles to that paper or not? Um, we still have all, a lot of the school information still that goes to the, to the Penn Franklin. It's still covered. Um, it's about, and um, someone can speak, uh, Tina, if you wanted to speak to, the, to what, for the other board members, especially the new board members, what we actually are talking about for paper of record. Um, it, it mainly talks about our requirement for legal notices. So those are the things that we're considering when we are putting in for the paper of record. And it may be good to hear, have we had issues with that? Um, has it come up where it's been more advantageous over this, this cycle since we've changed? Have we run into circumstances where um, not having more publication, uh, a more of a, a daily circulation in the TRIB, um, was beneficial for us for meetings and changes versus the uh, twice weekly publication in printed form um, with the Penn Franklin. So, because there is a difference in cost that we're talking about. Um, Pretty considerable difference in cost. So, um, that would be the thing, and that was the benefit that, that was being considered a lot when we were talking about it, was the more flexibility with legal notices uh, when we were putting things out for meetings and critical meetings. So. Um, is there, and if you don't have it, that's fine. I know I'm putting you on the spot, so. Um, okay, yeah, I mean. If you're, you're going to have to come up to the, to the microphone, Ms. Gillen. So for the board members um, that are new, first of all, um, welcome. And I can share with you some information that we discussed last spring um, when the board had decided um, to uh, make their decision on which paper they would select as the paper of record for that year. So to understand the criteria that Mr. Yant was speaking of, like what is the criteria for paper of record, we look at two different aspects. One, the paper of record for all, all of our legal notices that come out of the business department, uh, the facilities department, or from the board. The other component um, to the communications from, that come from the district are all of those public relations things, a lot about our educational programming and all of those feel-good things that you see in multiple papers, whether it's the Penn Franklin, the Tribune, the Post-Gazette, um, or out there electronically and on social media. But um, the specific criteria to be considered as a paper of record, um, the newspaper, an independent third party, must be intended for general circulation, published regularly at short intervals, fall under the category of the second class mail, legal notices must be archivable, accessible, and verifiable, they are required to be in a paid for and printed publication. And what we know are that both the Tribune as well as the Penn Franklin meet that set of criteria. So at the time that the board was looking at all of that, they asked me to do some research on circulation, um, you know, costs, uh, frequency of deadlines, and how often things are published. So I had provided some documentation to the board, which I can provide to all of you. Again, that would be dated April as of last year, prior to the time that the board was discussing the topic. Um, so I, I think as far as looking at that cost comparison, um, I know John had provided some information to you, and he can certainly share that with everyone, everyone as to what that's cost us in that frame of time um, to be able to look at the financial pieces to that, and, and that does fluctuate. Um, the other piece that I'm primarily responsible for is sending out media releases about all of the good news and, and all of our student successes here at Franklin Regional, and that is done um, in an equitable fashion. Every media release that I prepare uh, goes to the Tribune, it goes to the Penn Franklin, and it also goes to Murraysville Living, um, and oftentimes will go to the Post-Gazette. And those newspapers will then select what it is they would like to input into their publications, whether it goes in printed form or in many, many instances in the Tribune will go out in 
uh, a web-based version so that they'll post that online. Um, sometimes those things do get transferred in to the Murraysville Star, which is that neighborhood news and that community publication. Um, the Murraysville Star is not um, an option for a paper, paper of record because it doesn't meet that initial criteria. Um, so I think that Maybe I'll read the I look at both of those papers from my perspective. They serve us well in different ways. Um, some of the things that I send get directly printed. Most of the photographs that I send get printed into the Penn Franklin. Um, the Tribune Review oftentimes does a little deeper research. They'll come and interview teachers. And so they sometimes look at those things in a different perspective. So we're getting a lot of good coverage from both of those papers. So ultimately, Again, you're discussing the paper of record and what the legalities are and the expenses relative to you know, the paper of your choosing. So ultimately, that's the board's decision. Mrs. Gillen, uh, yes. any chance that you could provide us the number of submissions that, that you made in regard to the, the good news from the district? Sure, certainly. I keep a, a running tally of all the media releases for a number of different reasons. One, mostly for myself to keep track of what I'm sending out, and making sure I'm trying to provide equitable coverage to elementary, middle school, and high school, and all the different topics that I'm sending out. So um, I'll go from July 1st of last summer, which would be kind of our start and end of year. So I'm, I'm tracking July 1st to June 30th, 21-22 um, school year to date. Starting in July, um, I've submitted 73 to both the Penn Franklin and the Tribune, as well as Murraysville Living. The turnaround time on the publication is typically about seven days. So when you submit them, does that mean it's automatically published in this, or is No, Mr. Weinman, they, um, many of them are published. Right now, I have about uh, 13 releases are outstanding, which is about 18% of what I've submitted did not get printed. Um, right now, I, I'm also kind of looking at the, um, the additions, tracking the amount of news that we're getting out there. Um, when I'm looking at the, um, the last, say, 32 editions of, of the Penn Franklin specifically, we have uh, about 21 issues. Uh, Penn Trafford seems to have a bit more news in there published than we do. About nine of those issues, we have the same amount of coverage. And in two of those issues, Franklin Regional has more coverage uh, than our other local school district. So of the total number, you've submitted to each one of those Penn Franklin Trib. Is there, does one seem to print more? Franklin, of the items you submit? Um, it, they, they do it in a different way. Um, the Penn Franklin typically does just all of the printed versions. The TRIB will do articles, so they'll take some of the things that I send, research and add to it, and typically will do a lot of their own writing or add to what I send. Um, they also will take some of my photos, they'll do videos and different things that way. So they present them a little differently than they do in the Penn Franklin, but they're they show up in, in both of those publications. Okay, so if you submit it, it gets represented in some form or fashion in either one of them. Typically it does, yes. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the, the decision of the board as it pertains to paper of record, we, uh, our plan is to continue providing every media source access, not only to the district, but also to, to our press releases to make sure that, that gets out there. That has never stopped, and there's no plan to. I was going to say, we've always done that. that. Mm. Yeah, we've always done that. The, the point that I'm making for the community by listening to the community is that there's a lot more photos, there's a lot more pictures. I get both papers at home, okay? So I read them both. I get yelled at because I spend a lot of time reading the papers, but that's what I do. And I see an awful lot more data and a lot more information in there <clears> through the Penn Franklin than I do through the TRIB. Now, on the other side to what you're saying is true. If you're just looking at digital, that would be more in the, and I don't do the digital thing. It's easier for me just to take a paper and run and have a coffee or whatever. But uh, the paper is something that a lot of the folks look at and kind of look forward to. 
And a lot of them like to see pictures of their children or their grandchildren right there versus in a digital print. So there's two, there's two different formats. Uh, both are equally effective in their own way. Uh, I just look at, if we're looking at just coming down to a paper of record, I think that we don't turn our back on a community member of many, many years that's always been here to not have them be the paper of record when mostly it's about the legalities. And I don't think that, I don't think that the community really cares about the legalities. We're fulfilling our legal obligation by putting it in. And I think just choose the one that cost us the least amount of money is my opinion. Thanks. <coughs> Let me just add in that I, as a newcomer, uh, I'm sorry, I wanted to see how easy it was to go into whether it was the um, TRIB or into our website. And I have to say that I did a, just a search on legal notices, Tribune Review. I got the pen, uh, the penny saver up, and it said to go in there, which I was very confused on. Um, but you did. You have to go in there and search for it. When I went to the the, the school district's website, everything was right there on the front page, plus more information. So I think we would want to steer people into our own website versus to the TRIB and to some cyber hole somewhere. Any other comments from anybody? We'll bring this up at the next voting meeting. Any other questions for tonight? So motion moved. to adjourn. So moved, Mr. Mo motion to adjourn. <laughs> moved, seconded by Bill Dunn. Thank well, you, everybody. Was a holiday, good. Yeah, it was. I was good. Here.